Who's hungry? Scottsdale might seem like a giant golf course with rich snobs and plastic gold diggers. You know, like a place where Trump feels like a fish in the water. So I thought, why go to Scottsdale? I don't fit in, it's Halloween weekend, and nicknames like Snobsdale and Snotsdale didn't help either. But a local and a friend of mine called me to come here for its amazing food. Seemingly, a boring golf community is a thing of the past. Now it's a foodie destination with over 800 restaurants with award-winning chefs. Plus, it's one of the nice walkable neighborhoods close to Phoenix that you have to check out. So from swanky and elegant to modern and hip, we went to some restaurants in Scottsdale and got a local's perspective on life in Arizona. We came to SDK right away to meet my friend. Nick moved from LA to Scottsdale a couple of years ago for greener pastures, for a house in a nice neighborhood, good schools for his son, and a job at one of the biggest steakhouse chains in the nation. SDK is where you come for a James Bond, futuristic, elegant vibe, and for sizzling steaks starting at $50. But some of us just want to taste the happy hour first, dip our toes, and test how good it is. This is bomb. So bomb. Guys, oh my god. Mm -hmm. One after the other, every small bite tasted just like the decor. Giant wagyu meatballs, tuna tartare taco, beef tartare, and even the truffle fries tasted daring yet tasteful. The entertainment district, which is right over there, it's like right on right on that side of Scottsdale Road. It's got all the hottest pubs and bars. Like a lot of the kids from Tempe come up here and party. A lot of all of Phoenix comes and parties here as well. Uh, there's so much to do here. We got the best golf tournament for if you're a spectator. It happens once a year, I think in February. Um, and then we have spring training. So oh, we yeah. have the Dodgers out here, the Cubs. So you get wow. all these, spring just picks up with all these baseball fans that serve all the baseball players. Um, so that's really big. The spring is very busy. So now we're entering that busy season. A lot of people own houses here in other parts of the country. So when the weather starts going to crap out there, they come here during the winter. And then like a lot of people from Minnesota, Chicago, um, they're, we call them snow, snowbirds, people who have enough money to have like their condo here, their house over there, and they come here during the winter time. Snowbirds. Yeah, that's the that's that's term. We're migrating. <laughs> For a moment, you forget where you are at Tapas Papa Frita. Am I in Spain? Guitar players strum a soft melody until a flamenco dancer bursts into the scene. Smooth, hypnotizing hand movements, your heart starts beating faster with every footstep. It's emotional, it's passionate, and it swiftly works up your appetite. The Tapas menu is set to represent every region in Spain and to be truly Spanish instead of Spanish inspired. But I was craving one of the oldest desserts in Europe bread pudding. With soft hints of banana and apple, drizzled with caramel sauce, blessed with whipped cream, pastel de pan is sacred. I mean, it originated in Andalusia and Spanish monasteries by saving stale bread. And interestingly, they say if it's eaten with wine, together they represent the body and blood of Christ. Scottsdale is located in the Sonoran Desert, but at Hula's modern tiki, you're in Polynesia and on island time. Get the tiki bastard, a gin and bourbon cocktail with pomegranate, and dive into Hawaiian ceviche, a tropical burst of flavors with snapper cooked in coconut milk, or spice it up with the Thai chicken bowl with dangerously spicy Thai sauce, dressed up with avocado and fried sweet plantains. Oh, he wasn't walking around. That is pretty spicy. But do you find yourself loving simple and humble dishes at times? This Hawaiian specialty, Loco Moco, was created for teenagers in Hawaii who wanted something hearty besides a sandwich, fast and inexpensive. Sunny side up eggs melting like a lava on top of a burger patty, nestled with rice and covered in succulent brown mushroom gravy. Food porn. I'm so happy with my hair. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
In Phoenix and Scottsdale, Mexican and Italian food dominate the scene. Back in the days, Scottsdale used to encourage immigrant investment and made it as easy as possible for Italians to open small businesses. So it was only natural to end up at Evo's, a restaurant with an Italian owner and a chef. And of course, we do what we think Italians do. Get a bottle of Italian red, juicy steak bruschetta, drizzled with truffle oil, and Italy's most famous dessert, tiramisu. And talk about everything and nothing at all with some friends. I just wish the tiramisu was a little more rich but airy, dreamily soft with a subtle sweetness and just the right amount of bitterness from the coffee and cocoa. But what do I know? I'm no expert. Maybe this is how they do it in northern Italy. If you're going to Phoenix, you can't miss Scottsdale. At least come here for the food. I still think about that Thai chicken bowl at Hula's Tiki. Scottsdale is also home to botanical gardens, hiking trails, art galleries, and to the mighty Musical Instrument Museum, which I'll cover in my next episode of What to Do in Phoenix. And if you're also interested in checking out other neighborhoods, make sure to check out my Phoenix food tour right here.